dyslexia. I have it. My dyslexia makes it hard to learn, to read and spell. To me, dyslexia means I'm great at logic, lateral thinking, all the rest of it, but don't give me a number to remember and regurgitate and don't ask me to read something out properly. I've got a problem with dyslexia. I didn't realise it until, say, I was maybe in year three or so, and when my son was diagnosed with it, I realised that I really had a problem then. I remember when I was young and used to take readers home and I could I remember saying to my sister why couldn't I read properly like and she said it's just because you're little it will come with age but it never did come. I can remember when I was about 10 my sister was I think three years younger than me and she came home from school and was reading a book called Charlotte's Web. I told her don't read it near me because I didn't like reading at the time and I didn't like the fact that she could read more than I could. I'm 24 years old and I'm studying podiatry part-time. I've come to the conclusion that I have to do it part-time because otherwise I won't really get too far at all. Um, I have failed some subjects um, but I'm slowing it down and I'm fine. If I go slow I'll be fine. I'm halfway through my semi-trailer um, truck licence. Um, I've worked at Club Med, I've made pizzas, worked at an accountant's, um, managed sports stores, um, dental promotion, personal training, everything under the sun and I've worked for the same company for seven years while doing that. Well, these days I'm a drilling supervisor. I work in uh, Indonesia, in the jungles of Indonesia. I supervise 130, 140 people at a time. Coming over to Australia, I met my wife Corinne, and I, well, we've been married together for 20, 21 years now. Mm. Married for 20. We have three lovely children, and I think our children are all a little bit the same as all as us in our our problems with the reading and writing. You know, it's just something that's been passed on to them. Unfortunately, I guess you can say. Primary school was on and off. Um, my high school, um, the first year of high school, I wasn't allowed to go to school um, because of problems at home. Um, and then um, I got suspended and suspelled from a lot of schools. And then I went to um, drop-in school, like a street, a street kid, a place for street kids, like a school that street kids would go. And you would do other things like surfboard making and carpentry and. Um, artwork. And I just thought it was my behaviour though. Like I never, apart from the reading, like I couldn't read properly and I didn't know why. Because I was always, I was trying to find me somewhere stable to live, the learning thing was never an issue. Like it was never, yeah, they never worried about it. So I never worried about it. I think without dyslexia, I would be a, a more boring person. I, I think it's a vital part of my character, and I wouldn't give away, wouldn't give it away for anything. I think the combination of disabilities, the ADD, the dyslexia, and the visual impairment have combined to make me who I am. And I don't think I would change them if I could. Gives me a certain way of thinking that is different to other people. 
and hopefully this will create my own niche to succeed in life, I think. My dyslexia makes it hard to learn, to read and spell properly and that makes school hard. Um, I never got my pen licence in Year 5 and I had to practice cursive writing. I think it was every Wednesday afternoon um, and I never got to go in the, the class that got to read magazines in the library. That really hurt me because all my best friends got to read the magazines and it was one of those things where you're at that age that I never got pulled up. Everyone else seemed to swap around and everyone got their turn but I never got my turn. When you really try and as a child you try your absolute guts out and you don't get anywhere, that's what hurts. Once we got to high school we did a lot more reading out loud with novels etc and that was basically useless. I'd always feel horrible. I'd have a red face and I could feel myself burning up inside. She could, any teacher could get me to stand up in front of the class and talk about something. I could do an act. I could even sing a song or dance but reading, not my style. I just knew that I would never ever do it no matter what. I was never one to read in front of people. Even now, I don't like reading in front of people. I would just pretend like I was working when I wasn't. Or I would, like, memorise stuff. I'd be naughty. Or just get up and leave. I was asked to stand up and read maybe a couple paragraphs in class. That's when it really hurt because what it take me 20 minutes to go through reading, other kids would take five minutes. That's where I was in, in like, it, it didn't feel good. Spelling was a very difficult subject for me. I'd take, we'd get 10 words a week to, to learn. What I used to do is write them all out the night before, and then the day that we wrote them out, I'd write them all out again. They were all wrong, but the ones that I did the night before, I'd flip the page over and hand them forward to get them checked. I'd try to get 10 out of 10 uh, Wednesday, but I wouldn't do it every week because then the teacher thought, well, you know, he's doing pretty good at his spelling, but I got away with it. <laughs> there was always the smart kids, the naughty kids, and then there was always a Dumbo table. And it was full of kids that needed that extra help um, and the teacher always having to look over and make sure they're on track. She must have got my name mixed up because I was always on that table, so I'm guessing that they were short a seat. In year seven, when my class was given a project to do, and it was very, I, I did a very simple job, just one picture, a couple dot points about it, and I took it to school the next day and all the other kids had written, you know, 100 words or whatever year sevens write. And I the teacher didn't even expect me to have done it. Looking back, it was probably not the best attitude for the teachers to have towards me. Hmm. But you don't want to say anything because you're embarrassed, especially when you're at school. Education and learning has a lot to do with your self-esteem. Year five, we learnt long division. Uh, I can remember my teacher making me cry because I could not ever grasp it. I just could not get it and I did it over and over and over. When I was like in year seven or eight, I wasn't, there was a time when I wasn't allowed to go to school and then after when they said I could go to school, I just didn't go because, do you know what I mean, like what was the point of going back there? So I just never went. And... But even at high school, it was hard. Like I just, just couldn't do it. Like you know, some stuff, I would try, but I never got it. So, and I would just get frustrated at myself, like angry, it made me angry. Uh, me, I have, I have to practice reading every day at school. Then, when I get home, Mum makes me do more. I found out I had ADHD and dyslexia. Um, at the time, it answered a lot of questions for me and probably my parents as well, especially my mum. From the time that I found out that I did have dyslexia, 
Um, it gave me a point then where I could turn around and say, hey, I'm not just the Dumbo, you know, there are things that I can put in place to make me learn better. I think it's extremely important to know that you have dyslexia. I play chess, I do gym, I have won gold medals, I like art and I have lots of friends. My dyslexia. At school it was always easier to do the arts, the crafts, the phys ed, talking, play, that type of thing. Um, and I always achieved. I just took other subjects that I didn't have to get involved in, in too much writing and, and uh, studying and, and uh, like reading. I like art, I like to draw, um, I like doing stuff with my hands, um, like gardening or landscaping. Yeah, I just sort of like do things that I'm interested in doing, you know, and things that won't make me have low self-esteem, you know. I think one of the main things that helped at school with my learning difficulties was the fact that all the teachers were informed. My parents were very informed about my condition and my needs, so they were able to tell the teachers what I, what I needed. I found the most help that I've had through school and through learning um, has been things that have been put into real life sense. Teachers giving tips like using rulers when you're reading to shield off other spaces that you're looking at um, and little things like that that helped along the way and giving me opportunities to do things that I was good at um, as well as you know tips for things that I, I wasn't so great at. Um, bringing the classroom alive, that was what I thrived on. Um, the teachers didn't really worry, like they didn't yeah, they just thought I just had a behaviour problem. But when I was at high school, I had a friend and um, I don't know whether she knew, but she used to help me, like, you know, we used to just go and sit somewhere quietly and she used to just read stuff to me and help me with my work and stuff like that when I was at high school and that helped heaps. And that was probably the only thing that did help me. I think a major point in my learning life was in year five when I went to a reading program called Linda Moodbell. I gained three years of reading in, in this time. Through high school, I think I had the ability to organise my life so that it didn't show what I was bad at or what I felt really hard. Getting around things, I learnt that in real life you can probably do that as well. Um, and through that, I probably built more self-confidence. When I first started at uni, I was petrified, but I realised that there was um, like a learning connection where you can go to talk to people, counselling, that type of thing. And although the suggestions they had sound great, um, if the teachers or lecturers don't go along with it, then they're useless. I've found that note-taking is a very, very poor point in my study life, but through downloading stuff off the net um, from the lecturers giving it out beforehand, that's really helped me. And using other people's notes as well, um, and trying to network with other people and, and brainstorm with them is a really good thing. Um, assignments to me are better than exams or anything else because I can do them in my own time. I can spend as long as I want on them and do it at three o'clock in the morning if I wish, which is fantastic. Um, I start by going to the library, picking the topic, whatever it is that I'm writing about. And then I sit down once I've got the information um, and brought out the best pieces and start always on a computer. I never handwrite anything. Um, I find it a waste of time to handwrite. And then the computer really does the spell checks and stuff for me. I find that great. Um, and once I've got a bit of a draft, I'll go through it a few times for myself, um, change words around and, and the, the structure of the actual assignment, whether it be essay or questions. And then usually I need to get mum or dad or you know, a friend to check it over. Um, and they'll usually come up with some really silly errors that 
I just look at and laugh and so which is funny. And spelling. I am smart too. I know about lot, lots of things. I play chess. I do gym. I access information through conversations and watching television and just talking to people about a topic instead of reading. My dad says that I've always accessed the world through watching television and listening to the radio. I think a major factor in, in succeeding through high school was having my tutor as a mentor. I think my tutor was important in, in a mentor role. I was able to bounce my thoughts and ideas and just problems growing up with these disabilities.